we have begun. Okay, people are rolling in. Cool. That's what I always always have to watch for people coming in. So welcome, everybody. This is really exciting. I'm super pumped um, to have Grace with us here today, which I will introduce here in just a couple moments here. And she has something fun that uh, she's dealing with right now that you're going to hear about. It's going to this is a tribe of Academy first. But I, I don't want to be the one to spoil it. I'll let her share what is going on. But I just want to welcome everybody to this webinar. I'm super, super thrilled for this. It's really cool. Email marketing is just huge, you know, and it's such a game changing thing. And when I was talking to Grace like a month or two ago, and she was talking about just the passion behind the email marketing, I'm like, this needs to be a webinar because this is incredible <laughs> and it's very, very powerful stuff. So really excited. So thank you again, everybody. Um, and in case if you're um, first time joining us, I'm Stephanie Grace. Um, we also have Scott Rutz from the team in the background. So you can hear, I saw his chat coming through. Um, so he's going to be in the background, just making sure, you know, behind the scenes all working. And then also, you know, those questions uh, that you might be asking, uh, sharing with Grace, you know, we'll, he'll be watching for those and share them with us. So Again, welcome. And one other thing I like to mention too is if this is your first time joining us for a Travify Academy webinar, um, is Travify Academy is really it's just a free educational resource for travel professionals. And so even though we are Travify um, and we're hosting it, uh, we don't actually talk about or promote or do trainings on Travify as a product during these webinars. It's really just purely for education to help you just grow a very successful business. And so that's the goal behind this. So if you go to um, academy.travify.com, you'll actually find all of our past webinars, upcoming webinars. Um, and then uh, we also have a podcast, which we actually did a podcast with Grace and it just got released last week. So you should go check that out. I'll drop a link in the chat once we get going so you can uh, get a quick link to that. But um, it's really cool. There's just all kinds of stuff. Um, and then we also do, I'm going to plug really quick. We have new agent boot camp coming up, which is super exciting. That's next month, which is in literally just a couple weeks, which this summer's flying, um, or winter, whether you're where you are. Um, and so, um, I'll drop a link to that as well. So new agent bootcamp is going to be really cool. It's hosted by Travify Academy and Travify. So we do it's July 12th through the 13th and July 12th day one is all Travify Academy based where we're bringing in industry, um, colleagues and they're speaking on different topics from best practices for sales, marketing, building relationships, finding your niche, um, all that kind of good stuff. And then day two is going to be, um, hosted by Travify, where we actually will have a few sessions where we walk through Travify as a tool and to show you how you plug it into your business and how you use it, you know, from sales all the way to the end. So um, it's going to be a really good time. Uh, there's also trivia happy hour at the end, which we always love here at Travify. It's very fun. Um, so I will drop that in there, um, that link in the chat there. But Without further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce our speaker is Grace McBride, who is CEO and founder of Lucia. And I'll also let you share your screen, but I'll let you um, take it away, Grace. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And uh, you kind of mentioned this a second ago <laughs> of me currently dealing with something. I am currently calling in from the Seattle Tacoma Airport Centurion Lounge. So in classic travel advisor fashion. I am currently in an airport. So if you hear a baby crying, an airport announcements, it's just a day in the life and you all know how to do it. So I appreciate it in advance. Apologies, but it is what it is. So we're all dealing with our own travel deals and that's just how we're doing it today. Just rolling with the punches. Well, and I, I told Grace, this is a Travify Academy first from the airport lounge. Never happened. So this is awesome. It was bound to happen at some point. We're in the travel industry, you know? So it's all right. I mean, come on. We get I'm it. surprised it hasn't happened yet. I honestly. know. So right? I'm happy to be the first. So welcome <laughs> from Seattle. Um, you know, so I'm very excited to chat with you all today. I'm going to share my screen. Um, Perfect. And just if Stephanie, how's the volume? Am I talking loud enough? To yes. Go there? All good. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I'm so excited to chat with you all today about something that I'm incredibly passionate about. And hello, Melody from Seattle as well. Um, I am so passionate about marketing, copywriting, everything related to specifically email marketing. And so when Stephanie and I, Stephanie and I were talking about uh, just the importance of email marketing, how valuable it can be in your travel business that people most, most people don't leverage it at all or in the right way or enough. Um, I just felt like this was such an easy one and it's something that's so powerful and free most of the time, free, you know, so it's such a powerful tool to be able to use. And I wanted to make sure that um, we could dive into some of the ways that are actionable for you to be able to use in your travel business 
um, and hopefully is much more helpful um, than just, uh, you know, talking about all the ways that I love it, but also ways that you can use it as well. So thank you very much for having me. And I'm just going to jump right in. Um, a quick background about me, and, and you know, I definitely I'm sure there's a lot of people on the call who may not know who I am, so I'm very excited to share more. Um, I am a former travel advisor myself. I was a travel advisor for over three years. Um, I loved planning itineraries and trips. I used Travify all the time. Um, and so we just felt like me and my co-founder felt like there was such a need in the industry. We built a company called Uchia, if you're familiar with it. Um, and we've been building that the last few years, but I'm not here to talk about that. Um, I just want to give some context onto my background so that you know I'm not some crazy person walking in uh, telling you all about the things that you know, and without any backgrounds. So I actually went to Cornell University for undergrad. I was a communication major. So that might be a lead toward the bias of why I love email marketing, copywriting and everything communicating is because that is my passion and studied it and went to school for it because I believe it's so important and imperative for businesses. Um, I then went to Notre Dame recently to get my MBA. Um, again, focused on entrepreneurship, communication, business writing, and just all the ways that it's really important as business owners and entrepreneurs, which we all are. Um, whether you're an advisor, an agency owner, or otherwise, you know uh, how important this is. Or even if you work as a concierge, tour operator, et cetera, um, you know, there's so many ways that communication is relevant um, even beyond just your personal life. I also started a company called TripKit. I don't know if you're, any of you are familiar with that. Um, I no longer own TripKit, but I was the founder of that as well which was an assistant company for travel advisors. And I also worked at JetBlue as an intern uh, on their copywriting and marketing team. So if you ever see any JetBlue fun uh, signs or ads or anything like that, that is some fun, pithy, punny commentary, that was me. Um, so hopefully that provides some context onto kind of my background and why I like to speak about not just marketing, but communicating in general with your customers. So hopefully that's useful. This is a lot of text, don't bother reading it. Really, I just wanted to outline some of the things that I wanted to talk to you all about today, which is basically the importance of email marketing, how to do it, the ways to do it better, um, just some of my tips and tricks, and lastly, some of the tools that I use. So everything that I'm gonna share with you today is stuff that I use constantly and that I follow religiously. So, um, you know, this isn't just stuff that I'm pulling out of nowhere. This is stuff that I'm currently doing. And at the moment for both, both of my companies, um, I've written all of our email content, just me. So I can promise you that I've had plenty of experience doing this on my own um, and why it's so uh, you know, accessible for everyone else to do and use. Um, now I wanna just, before I talk about anything else, I love talking about the common fears and misconceptions that have to do with email marketing. I feel like everyone thinks, I don't have enough time. I have nothing to say, nothing of value. I don't wanna bother my customers. I mean, what do they even wanna hear from me? And I hear you and I totally understand because I felt the same way, but you'd be surprised how much opportunity that there is to provide authenticity, personality, context to who you are as a business owner or even a person in business. So I would say there's so many opportunities to talk yourself out of writing an email to your customers or to your community or to your newsletter list. Um, and I would challenge you to say that you'd be surprised if you just show up in front of your, your network or community, how much they actually wanna hear from you. And that was the first thing that I learned is just how much people actually do wanna hear from you. Um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but I just, I wanna throw that out there that I know that a lot of people come into this with this wall up of, I just don't have the time. I don't, I don't have anything to say. I don't wanna bother anyone. I hear you. And hopefully by the end of this, I changed all of your minds about that in particular. So why email marketing? My photo behind this image is not showing up, but basically I'm just the text on here saying, why email marketing? Why is it important? Well, I'm we're talking about specifically because it has a higher return on investment than any other form of marketing combined. So if you're talking about Twitter, Facebook, social media, it doesn't matter the return on investment, which in this case is usually free. So spending time on your email can yield you a much higher return on investment compared to spending time on social media um, or any other form of communication. And I have plenty of data to support that. So if anyone wants to challenge me on it, I'm always happy to share. Um, but it's just well known that email can get you a lot of higher traction with customers, people in your network, um, investors, whatever, whoever it is that you're talking to, it'll get you much more for your time and your money, however you're choosing to use that. So uh, the, that's one of the reasons why I lean into it so heavily because you're gonna get so much more out of it. 
Then I'm also biased because people actually like getting emails from companies they do business with. I guarantee you most of you are probably like, yeah, right, no way. No, this is statistically shown that people actually really do enjoy getting emails from companies that they like to do business with. So if you show up in front of a customer who uses you and used you more than once, they're probably thinking, oh, let me see what they have to say. You know, we're not talking about spam emails here and, and content that's of no value or boring emails that are just salesy. I'm gonna talk about the type of content that you don't wanna send for sure. Um, I'm talking about real meaningful content people actually really want to read that. There's a reason why we have such fantastic open rates and traction with our emails. And it's because people like seeing what we have to say, even if they can't buy from us, whether they can't afford us, don't need us right now, they still read our emails and reply to me, say, thank you for this. I love this. I see value. So there's a lot more that you can be doing beyond just selling. And there's so much more there for you um, that I would really recommend leaning into. And this is my favorite part too, is that you get to talk directly to your potential customers or your community or your network. On social media, they may not see it. They may be too busy and decided not to check Instagram that day and it may be get lost in the feed. They may not check their LinkedIn or you may not be connected on LinkedIn. But if you have someone's email address, unless you're sending spam emails and you go to their junk inbox, um, you're, they're gonna get your email and hopefully you're sending good enough content that they wanna open it and they do read it. And we'll talk again about what that looks like but you get the chance to have your voice heard directly to them. And there's very few times that you get to do that. And I think there's so much value in communicating one-on-one -on -one with the people you wanna to talk to, sell with, or work with. So that's just something to add some authenticity there that I think is valuable. Now, when we talk about the actual emails themselves and talking about your email list and marketing in general, my I'm gonna bring up a funny quote in a second, but basically I think not just the content that you write, but also building your email list is just as important. Again, apparently the background image on the, this uh, slide isn't working today, guys, so apologies, but building your email list is just as important as the actual content itself. And my dad is actually someone that has said this to me and he's a very successful entrepreneur in himself. And when we were starting to build Lucia, he said, Grace, you are not serious about your marketing until you get serious about building your email list. And I was like, yeah, right, what do you mean by that? And he was like, no, if you are not trying to get as many people, good customers, relevant people into your ecosystem, which is your email list, right? Your ecosystem, they're never going to hear from you or they're not going to hear from you enough, or you're not serious about marketing to them or reaching them or talking to them. So until you get serious about building a, sale, a, a, a news funnel into your email list or a, a funnel into your newsletter list, you're not going to be able to reach as many people as otherwise probably would want to hear from you. And we'll show you some ways to do that, but I want you to just really resonate with that and think about, do you really capture every single person that you chat with and make sure they end up in your, in your CRM or your database of emails? Are you sure? Are you sure you're cap capturing everyone's information? Because even if they're a good fit right now, they may be in five years, they may refer you to someone, they may be someone that is of interest in a totally different project. So I would say when it comes to your ecosystem, it shouldn't just be for sales. It shouldn't just be for sending out, you know, this is a promotion I'm doing. It should be a building a community. And the only way to do that is by bring people in. So you aren't serious about your marketing until you get serious about your email list. And I'll stand by that forever. I'm gonna show you three quick ways that I constantly use to bring in people to our ecosystem, to our email list and use it as a funnel. So this is one. This is a QR code link. So a lot of times people, if I'm seeing them at a conference, I'll give them a QR link and it'll take them to this page. And all I ask is I need your name and your email address. That's all I need. You don't need to sign up for anything. You don't need to pay for anything. I just need to be able to access you in the future and talk to you. And you can always unsubscribe and they're choosing to hear from you as well. You have to remember that. They wanna hear from you. They're signing up to hear from you. So you wanna make sure that you reach them and you get their attention in the future. So Creating these forms and opportunities to always be engaging and getting people's information is very important. And I think there's so many ways that people could be capturing more people on their email list. They just forget about it. Don't think it's necessarily that important for that instance, or maybe think, oh, it's not that relevant. I don't need it, or I won't get that much out of it. And again, I'll show you some ways that you can generate more opportunities for this, but these forms are really a way to just invite people in. And it's just a frame of mind that I recommend using to do that. 
this is another form. We're very popular on the forums lately, I guess. But um, basically, we have this on our website to bring people in whatever they want to just hear more. So, oh, sorry, this one's the conference one. The other one was for just hearing a demo. So the other one was on our website for a demo. This one's for a conference. Again, all I ask for is your name and your email address. That's it. On the back end, I tag them as coming from a conference or coming from looking for a demo. And that's, we can talk about that a little bit later on, on data and things like that. But really, you really want to make sure that you're just inviting people in. So there's another opportunity, going to a conference. Instead of getting a business card, have them sign up using your form. And this is important for suppliers too, or people in your network, not just clients. So any opportunities to bring in people into your network is important. This is another one. Again, we mostly work with travel advisors. So this is easy for us to have on a demo and show a QR code at the end and say, click this and you'll get a free credit um, to your account. Now, most people are not going to walk up to a traveler at a pool and say, if you want to work with me, <laughs> I'll give you $50 free credit, use this QR code. That is not how luxury travel works. We all know that. Um, so I'm not suggesting that. But there are so many places in which I'm sure you are um, interacting with consumers that you think might be relevant to work with you. Um, and I just, I just invite you to challenge yourself to find new ways to invite them into your network. Even if you have to add their emails manually, you have to remember to do it. And so that's just something that I really encourage you to do. But usually your website and your email address, like bio, some of the easiest ways to do it. I encourage people to, to be drawn in. Oh, look at me. I gave some ideas. I forgot. That. <laughs> yeah, I wrote it all out for you anyway. So basically, website forms is our most common. People are always showing up on your website. If you have access to your own website data, you probably see you might even have hundreds of people checking your website a week, right? Imagine all those people had the opportunity to join your, your email list. Is it prominent enough on your website? Is it up top enough? Can they really see it and join? Is it inviting enough for them? If not, you might want to consider giving them something for it, a value, not just nothing, but something like a video, you know, introducing them to who you are. Um, I'm going to talk about video some more, but I think Stephanie and I, when we were talking about video, we were saying how you're able to draw so many people in by saying, I want to talk to you in a video rather than like, here's an email. And if you can show on your website, click this to see more about our process and how we work. Everyone's going to want to click and view that, even just because they're curious. You know, they may not want to work with you yet, but they might just be curious and say, "Yeah, I'd like to learn more about how you work, how your business works. I want to see who you are. I'm curious. I'm, I'm nosy." And you can make them give them your email address in order to see the video. Most likely, because they're giving you their email address, they want to hear from you in the future. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done it. And so, there's opportunities to give value, provide content, um, and in return, you're inviting them into your network. Another one, very easy, exclusive travel guide. I'm sure plenty of you might do this for your destinations that you focus on or different tips and tricks, but offering free content is so easy. And the second you offer it on your website, on your social media, let's say, of, you know, these are some of the best places to go in Europe right now that are under the radar. That's an example, right? People are curious. They want to read things. They want to learn more and consume more content that's relevant to them. You know, let them download a free PDF. Give them a, a contest or giveaway with the hotel you want to partner with that maybe is willing to do a free giveaway of a room night. Um, partner with someone else in the industry. And maybe you give you know some opportunity to work with you and another advisor or, or concierge or et cetera. And as a result, you draw them in. And my favorite of recent, we've tried doing this recently and it's worked out really well, is VIP access to things. If you have a client base that's based in New York, get some fun opportunities to invite them to events or, or experiences or get them on the list somewhere. Um, and you're just, you're talking about this on social media or your website, et cetera, or again, through your email list. Um, and you're trying to create virality that invites people to pay attention to who you are and what your business is. So that's just something to keep in mind. But I say all of this to say, discounting yourself, discounting your price, getting discounts in general will always attract someone that's more attracted to discounts. And I think that's something that not everyone here, maybe in specifically just luxury or high end, you might be more interested in, in all different ranges of type of travel. I don't know. But I just know that it's important that whatever type of content you put out there, you're going to attract that type of person in. So just make sure that you pay attention to whatever you're putting out matches your ethos as a business. So I hope that makes sense there.
but these are some easy ideas. And social media link tree is the last one I just wanted to mention. If you have an Instagram, a TikTok, a LinkedIn, a Facebook page, you should create a link tree account that'll allow you to link to your website, to maybe something that you're offering, that free PDF, whatever it is. And if you're not familiar with what link tree is, I'd write that down. I highly recommend everyone use a link tree. It is an easy, easy way to bring people and invite them into your network as a business. And it's free to use. I use the free version. You don't have to pay for it. Um, and it's very easy to use it within your business on social media, website or other. This slide again with this image says what to put in your emails. And I was talking to Stephanie endlessly about what type of content works, what doesn't. And I think you should just, if you're gonna remember anything of the, of the content that you write, if you, there's anything that you remember is authenticity, personality, and value. That is the utmost important thing that you need to remember when you're communicating with anyone in your network, whether it's a client and you're trying to get them to use you uh, as, a, as a service, if you're trying to just bring more people into your network, just from a perspective of network building, whatever that may look like, you always need to show up with authenticity, personality, and value. And I try to do this in our email content as much as possible because I get emails back all the time saying, oh my gosh, I loved your email. I'm not a client for you. I never like, you know, there might be someone that doesn't, wouldn't be using us. And they're like, oh my God, I love getting your emails. I'm like you don't even use us. You don't even pay for our services and you still love getting our emails. It's hilarious. Um, so it's just hysterical, like that someone would want to, would want to get the emails that we send. And it's because there's something of value in there for them, or it's interesting or it provides value to their day, or it's just entertaining rather than get 50% off. Or these are the three things that I recommend for whatever. Maybe if it's something that's tired and done many times before that really isn't very fun or very bland or static. That's why it's important that you also have the authenticity and the personality as well. So this is an email that we sent out about a, three days ago, I think, or two days ago. And literally the header image said, fireworks, fun, and a Lucia long weekend. There is not much there other than just a little bit of fun, flirtiness with 4th of July, talking about, you know, we're going to have some fun this weekend. Come here and learn more. And the email basically was like, before you kick off your shoes and enjoy that, you know, nice cold glass of wine, um, you know, and jump in the pool, you know, this is what I recommend you do. Again, this is for our U.S. audience. I tailored it to make sure it only went to our U.S. clients. Um, that's something to keep note of, that if you're sending something related to a specific country, you might want to make sure that you're only sending it to the people in that country. Um, but it, it was just a way of saying, like, this is something that we're showing up here in front of you, and we're going to provide some value in here for you without being like, here's a 50% off discount for using our service. No. So this is an example of authenticity. And we mentioned video before. Video is the e easiest way to show up and communicate directly from you to your consumers, to your network, whatever. Network is incredibly powerful and no one should underestimate it. The quality of your videos, I don't care if you have a bad camera, if you don't have a microphone, all you really need is to sit in front of a window with your laptop and put up a fake background. I'm in front of a window at the Seattle Tacoma Airport in a lounge and I'm on video with you right now. And if I recorded a video like this, I'd be pretty, pretty pleased with the quality of this. And I have just AirPod headphones in. So I, for anyone saying that, you know, it's too hard to do video, I don't know what to say. It takes practice, don't get me wrong. Showing up in front of a camera is weird. You may not like it, but showing up every once in a while and showing your face and communicating and showing your personality has a measurable value. And there's also a lot of statistics showing that video uh, converts people a lot, lot better than just static content. Because if you looked at this email, what's the first thing that you see? the big giant image saying, press me. <laughs> it's a button, it's encouraging you to press it. You're gonna click that instead of reading all the e words that I said before already in this email. And so it's a way to say, here I am, I'm showing up and I wanna talk to you. And that is where we're providing some authenticity in our email here. The next is personality. I live for our emails in the way of like coming up with fun, pithy commentary. That's my personality. If you're a very serious person, if you're someone who's very elegant, if you like different, you know, whatever type of content you like to share, show up that way, show your personality. Don't be something that you're not, show up the way your brand would. Um, 
and but make sure you can read that because if you're just a robot no one's going to want to read the emails either so showcase a little bit of the flair and be open with yourself i'm going to stop and say there's a lot of talking here i want to take a step back and see if there's any questions at all i just kind of running through a lot of these topics and i feel like personality and authenticity and value are something that's really really important and i want to make sure that if there's any questions there that i answer it so any at all from anyone well, there's one here or just a couple just random ones on like when you're creating your videos, um, what software are you yeah. using? Great question. And I'll touch on some more softwares, but I didn't even think to include that. So thank you. Um, I use Loom a lot, L-O-O-M. Um, it's free to use uh, up until like a certain point, but we're still not even paying for it. We use it all the time. Um, Loom basically will show up on your screen and can either screen record or just record you very easy. And the video can live on that, that website for Loom and you can just share it as a link. You can embed it into emails onto your website even. So it's super easy. Or if you want, you could download that email and upload it to YouTube. Another tool is, uh, is a Zoom. So you can literally get onto a Zoom with yourself <laughs> and record yourself via Zoom and it'll download it to your laptop. And there you go. And you have a video recording. So do not do not spend money on expensive software. You do not need to spend time, you know, editing the every perfect detail out of it. Yeah, if I say an um or something like that, or I get off track and I need to cut out a section, Lou makes it very easy to edit. I will say that. So if you just want a simple tool to edit the video, it's like a drag and drop tool, same way that your camera roll kind of is. So that's really easy. Um, there's just no need to go crazy, right? Like, especially as you're just getting started, keep it simple, keep it really easy and low barrier for you because it's more about showing up here than getting it perfect because most people like i said in the beginning most people think well it's not great like i don't know if i want to do it it's very easy to come up with a lot of reasons not to do it so that's just my kind of encouragement there i love that that's smart um one last question here and um, but yeah. if you're going to talk about this later then uh we can wait but sure. uh someone had asked about thoughts on using ai like just kind of for writer's yeah. block um i mean because i think that would be really helpful but then also you know the voice and personality but what are your thoughts on you know utilizing that tool yeah and i'll talk about it in a little bit but i will touch on it cr uh, quickly here is that i created the entire deck for this presentation using ai impressive i Beautiful. said i have two hours this morning you know to do and it was not this morning but it was two days ago <laughs> saying i need to come up with the deck for this presentation um this is the general outline of notes that me and stephanie had come up with a few weeks ago for this talk and this is my tone of voice this is my audience i mean the whole entry into the into chat gbt was all of like five lines long like it wasn't complex and i said give me a good outline for a presentation and I use that exact outline um, and I went from there. So wow. I would say, if you're not sure what to talk about, say to ChatGBT, I'm a luxury travel advisor, I'm a travel advisor, I'm a tour operator, I'm based in New Zealand, I'm based in New York, I'm based in London, and I need five video topic ideas with the audience being a traveler that I want to bring into my network or as a sales tool to bring more people into my ecosystem or whatever your goal is you're going to want to say who your audience is, what your goal is, and the tone of voice is always helpful to make it more attributed to you, you know, so it doesn't sound like some robot or way too formal or way too casual. So you'll always have to edit it and tweak it, especially if you're using it as like a script rather than an outline. Um, it's a great tool and that's kind of what I used here. So again, I'll, I'll show I'll show some examples of that, but that would just be a really good example there. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. All right, I'll let you keep also, going. This is such good stuff. No, yeah. And and for the actual writing of the emails too, um, you can always do it even just to come up with an outline or the entire email. So I would say, let me see, is it this one or um, yeah, I think it was both of these. I think this email right here, like just these few paragraphs I did it in chat GBT. And I was like, I'm writing an email to so and so group of people my tone of voice is fun and playful and casual. And the goal is to make them excited about using our platform on a Monday. I was like, I, it's just a Monday. I have no like interesting point of view to add to, re but I want to reach out to my customers because every time I do, I get a new client. So that's my kind of mentality in my head is 
And I know that from statistics in our business that every time I send an email out, I get at least one to three new customers. So I'm like, okay, it's Monday. I want to send out an email. What do I send? I don't know. I don't have any good ideas today. My brain hurts. I don't know. I'm super busy on 15 other things. I've asked ChatGBT and it's given me like, well, just lean into the fact that it's a Monday and here's an example. And that's kind of the way that you can use it there. Again, make sure you bring your own personality into it, but you can use AI as a great base and then you can go in and adjust it as you need. So I'd say I recommend it for that reason. Yeah. And then the last thing I say is value. And this is incredibly important uh, from the sense of don't just email people for the sake of it. Don't bother them. They don't, you know, people don't want to be bothered. And we, I know it sounds counterintuitive of like, don't, don't not send emails because you don't want to bother people. It's important for you to provide value to make sure that that doesn't happen. And that's how you can make sure that you don't feel like you're bothering someone. So as a good example, um, in a lot of our emails, I will say, these are five example types of projects that people use Lucia for. Creating Canva uh, presentations, using us for itinerary building, using us for out of office support, social media coverage, whatever that looks like. But I use it as an example of saying, you may not know what they're using for. So here are five ways. As a trial advisor, tour operator, anyone in this line of work may say, I'm not quite sure how to use you. I don't know how to interact with you as a business. I like you, but I don't know how to use you. Give an email of five ways that they can use you. Change it up every week. I use the same template every other week to say, here are the five ways that I was used this week by other clients. So you're almost using the same template of an idea of a business, but I'm just changing the fill in every time. So this whole template I use every week. And it's like, these are the five examples of requests we saw this week. You can probably do that. Of These are the five trips I saw this month, right? Or the trips I built this month or the, the problems that I solved for my clients, right? So imagine you could just keep the template and just reuse it and provide value every time. That's ways to make a great return on your investment and remind people to come use you. So that's just something that I would use over and over again. But of course, the value piece too must have people called to an action. And I don't like call to actions because I feel like it makes it so salesy. So I don't like the idea of like making people use me and making people come to my website. So your call to action doesn't need to be like sign up here, try it, whatever. It doesn't have to be. It can be download this free PDF I gave you. Watch this video of some interesting place I just went. It can be a bunch of different interesting ways to get people to interact with you. And the end result doesn't have to be pay me money or use me for something and, you know, use my services. It can be just interact with me as a business and I'll provide you value and I want you to interact and I want to build a relationship. Maybe one day you use me, maybe you use me now, but this is just a way to continue building on the rapport that you have with people in your network. So I would say most importantly though, you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to the data at the end of the day. And also this was the image that was supposed to load on all the other slides. So now we at least get to see how pretty it is. <laughs> but basically a lot of times I was writing emails and I had no idea if it was good, if it was working, if the content was useful. And I finally switched platforms to one that shows me analytics. And I realized I had unbelievable marketing numbers like crazy, crazy numbers. And I was like on certain types of emails. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is what works. This is what is useful. This is what doesn't work. You know, no one opens these emails. This time of day is horrible. I don't honestly spend that much time digging into the data. I think get a good sense of it, get a quick grasp. I spend maybe five minutes a month max looking at some of the stats on the emails I sent over that month. And that's about it. And I call it a day and I do it again next month. But it, the goal is to make sure that you are resonating with the people that you're working with. So this is just a screenshot. I show up with receipts, you know, I show up with, with the data to make sure that you all know that I, I know what I'm talking about. These are our four most recent emails. Uh, sorry, three most on the right. The, four, the one on the left also was the most recent, but it was to a specific group of people. So that's why it looks like a lot less recent. Um, but as you can see here, we had 72% open rate, 60% open rate, 52% open rate, 66% open rate. The average open rate, I don't know how to convey this. Well, Stephanie, I don't even know if you know the, the true numbers. It's like, isn't it like 10% or 
something yeah, like that, it's or even less. Yeah, not that high at all. Yeah. It's like five like, to 10 percent, yeah. I think, is the right, like, average open rate for an email. I think it can get down as low as 2% would be considered yeah, a good open one rate. One person, one Rick Paxson just said 2%, which I believe. Okay, yeah, you just supported crazy. my point even more, Rick. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you very much. So 2%. And we're reaching consistently over 50%. So I would say, there's, and it's not like we email 30 people. You know, we're emailing 1,700 people at the moment. I think we're up now to almost 2,000 from the last time I screenshotted these. So again, our email list grew, I would say from January this year, from about 300 people to almost 2,000. That is, I'm not even going to do the math in my head because I'm um, freezing, but it's, it's a many X growth rate of knowing what our growth is in terms of bringing in users into our email list and then getting them to open and listen to us. It doesn't mean everyone here is using us. We don't have 1,700 customers. We don't. But we do have a lot of people that have signed up and started using us as a result of being in our network and maybe getting a few emails, learning what we're about, meeting me, getting on the demo, watching a video and learning more about who we are. And that is why email marketing is so valuable. A 5% click-through rate. That means they clicked on the link that I offered them to view. This one, I believe, is a video. This one, these two are a little bit lower. You know, I don't like the one point whatever percent. Meanwhile, most click through rates are like 0.2% or something as well. Um, but, you know, we like to provide that value, provide the personality. And as a result, we see, we see people saying, yeah, I want to read your content. And so for that reason, I just recommend paying attention to those details. Um, again, don't get lost in the weeds. Don't, don't go crazy on email segmentation to a point where it's wasting your time. Um, make sure that your emails speak to either everyone or you're sending out specific emails to specific groups of people. See how we did here. A specific, it was going to a new agency. We were letting all their members know that we are now partnered with them and they can get a better price. So that's a good example of that. Um, but other than that, you want to make sure that you're tailoring it only when you need to. Don't make more work for yourself. Just find ways to speak to an audience and start from there. If that makes sense. Any questions there? I don't know um, if, uh, Stephanie got me, but well, one one quick thing because a couple of people yeah, mentioned they hear somebody talking in the background, but I think they might have missed. About that. No, it's okay. It's uh no, it's uh, but I think they might have missed though to know that you are stranded at an airport right now, so that's what it is. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm fully <laughs> stranded in Seattle Airport. I'll talk louder. Hopefully, that blocks out the other noise. But I appreciate it. And I'm so <laughs> sorry for the noise that I blame me. I tried to get the phone call booth room but they're stranded for people today. So oh, they, did, they said no. So a lot of I people tried. in the same position. It's all right. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> um, one question that um, I, there was a lot of questions about just uh, what email platform. So do you mind sharing which one like you use or other ones that you, you uh, oh, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so we use Flowdesk. Flowdesk makes beautiful, beautiful emails. It's truly stunning that the tools and the platform they've built. I also used to use MailChimp. I think they do a great job for a more data-driven approach and it's very easy to use as well. Um, but we really, really care about design at Lucia. And so for that reason and simplicity, and so Flowdesk was perfect for us. Um, of course, I also use OpenAI. Uh, for all of our chat GPT like content needs. There's many other tools. I highly, highly recommend playing around with the AI component um, before, instead of just writing it off as not being relevant for your business. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise just writing off tools because they seem unfriendly to use. I really, really think this could be something that it takes a few minutes off the email pressure from you, takes off the pressure of writing emails, coming up with the ideas, generating new context, content it can really streamline a lot of what you do there and can make it seem less scary so i'd see say try that and then lastly is lucia our platform itself actually has expert freelancers on our platform that can do content creation from you for you whether it's emails newsletter writing social media etc they can do a lot of the creation for you so instead of and again sorry if it's really loud i hear what you're talking about i'm sorry <laughs> no worries we can still hear you okay good um but in terms of creating great content, if you're like, I'm an advisor that's barely keeping my head above water, water. I'm, an, I'm a business owner that can barely, you know, get enough time to do X, Y, and Z, or I'd rather be spending my time on more, you know, revenue generating tasks. Great, that's what we do. Feel free to also give Lucia a try to help actually have someone do all the content creation for you. 
and most likely they'll have known all the content I already shared in here as well. So um, I would just say those are some tools that you can really lean into as well. Um, I know Travify is also building a ton of tools that are really beneficial as well for like website building and things like that. Lean into all these opportunities to build forms, generate, you know, bringing in new emails into your network. There's so many opportunities to use email networking in your business, email marketing in your business. And I think most people are sleeping on it, honestly. And I think we have so much more that we could be doing as a business that we aren't doing. So I'd say, take it from me. We've grown tremendously just by free emails and there's so much you can do as well. So hopefully that adds some value to you guys. And I just want to share that email is endless and so are you. So hopefully that, you know, just reminds you that there's so many opportunities out there for you and your business and email is just one of those ways to use it. So hopefully that's helpful. I love that. That is beautifully said. How cute. I love that. Emails are messy. <laughs> so are you. Um, a big question. So uh, one big one that I definitely want to ask first is um, what is, a lot of people ask this, like, what do you think is the best frequency of sending emails? Because there's like definitely, you know, just like what you said at the beginning, you know, people were worried about being too much and you don't want to like ruin it because you just do one email more and then they unsubscribe. And you're like, oh no. So what would you say? What do you say is the best frequency? Yeah, I'd say if someone's unsubscribing, they were thinking about it before. And usually it's not because of frequency. Um, usually it's because they just aren't interested. Don't take it personally. You know, they're not the right customer for you. It's okay. Let them go. <laughs> you know, um, that being said, there is too much email for sure. So we don't send more than one email a week. That's my policy. That being said, my policy is also to send one email a week. You know, I don't let a week go by without sending an email. So for us, it's very strict. One email a week. That's about it. Um, if we're doing more targeted campaigns for a new customer and like doing a campaign, whereas like they sign up, um, I send some like follow-up emails that's specifically related to them starting as a new customer. So like maybe a follow-up email three days later, one a week later, one more, two weeks later. Um, that's, that's a little bit different. That's like more of like a flow of, um, email targeting for a specific need, um, which is just as important. So I would say, again, I try not to do more than one a week. Really, like, you don't want to be Macy's that's sending me like 15 emails a week or, you know, Lulu's clothing or Steve Madden. You know, I'm getting so, I'm bombarded. So, but you do have to show up and be top of mind. And it's such a delicate balance. It's going to take some trial and error. You're going to, you know, make some missteps on like playing out what's too much and too little. Um, I got on a call two weeks ago with a potential new big enterprise client. It was like such a make or break, you know, meeting for us. And the first thing that they said when we got on the call was, you know, I get way too many emails from you and it's just getting really annoying. I was like, Oh my God, it's like my, that's my, my, that's my biggest fear ever. I'm so sorry. And you know, their, their response was, you know, uh, blah, 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 blah. And, and I realized that they had signed up like three different email addresses. So that's why. Um, but you know, still, you don't want to be reaching people too much or bothering them. So I'd say about one a week is really healthy. One a month is too few, in my opinion. I really think no, no one's going to remember you a month from now. You know, like if you want them to buy from you, think of you. One a week is a great number to, to work at. Mm -hmm. I agree because email is better than social media where, you know, you can post and then it's very easy for many people that you wanted to see it that won't see it. So if you do just one email a month, like the, the chances go really high of them also just quickly deleting it, not realizing, especially if they're doing like a little inbox clear out and they just don't realize, you know, and so I like that one, that's what Travify sticks with too, is like the one a yeah. week, um, you know, and it, every once in a while if we have to do two, cause there's like an announcement, but it, it but it has to be a, for a reason, you know? So I think that's cool. And I was about to say for us, every email has to have value. So I won't yeah. send an email if I feel like I'm just sending out an email for the sake of it. So challenge yourself to make sure that you're showing up with true value into their inbox make sure that your subject line is funny as heck or super interesting or click baby, like in a way, not in like a gross way, but like just in a way that like gets them interested in you. So a lot of times our emails are like, um, you know, here are the three ways to spend more time by the pool this summer early weekend or something like that. Here are um, the five most infrequent requests, like the five weirdest requests we get on Lucia. And that was an email we sent out of like the five things we like saw once and never again, you know, and we're super weird, things like that. So uh, I would say lean into your subject lines, lean into that attention grabbing 
piece of it and then provide value, show up with yourself or your team or whoever with some true, um, interesting, relevant content. That's smart. And on the content side, there were some questions about, um, like some people would say like they, their, their problem that they fear is that just like the people aren't taking time to read. Um, someone else had asked, like seeing your emails is making me wonder if ours are too long is less more. So do you probably have kind of they're too long? <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> they're probably too, too long. Like, yeah. yeah. So let me go back real quick and just show you, um, one of the examples I showed and screenshotted. So and I can even show my my actual flow desk. I show up with receipts, guys. Um, <laughs> the the this is a full email that I sent. This is it. Um, and so we didn't. There's nothing under this. This was a screenshot and like cut off. This is all we showed. And no one has time to hear from me for like and, and sit and sit around and read 15 paragraphs for me. Don't get me wrong. There's some emails that have longer paragraphs because it's an announcement of some sort or whatever. I do that very, very rarely. And it's only because I have to say every word in that email. And like, otherwise I'd cut out as much as possible. So less is more. Pack a bigger punch in what you're saying. Pack a bigger punch. Say less. Be more interesting, more relevant. Push yourself harder to be succinct with the words that you're using. Use better words. Be more like poignant with them and just pack a bigger punch rather than take up space in their inbox because you don't get a lot of time be interesting and relevant and then get out <laughs> and be up again next week and, and be in front of them again next week so that's one example of really short and a video and i think this video is like an eight minute video it's a long video but it was like a full demo of our platform and they may not have watched the whole thing but at least they saw probably most of it um this is another one of this is the only like paragraph I show. And then I show three to five examples of these like squares of examples of types of requests. But this is the only thing I include writing wise, you know, like there's no additional page where like you read more, like this is it. I, it's simple. Please create a Canva ad during X, Y, and Z. That's all we say. It's like a, it's a potential way to use Lucia. So I'd say less is more always. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Um, a question that I, I thought about earlier and I wanted to ask is, um, what do you use for like your graphics and photos? Canva every time. And I actually use a freelancer on them. She had to make them all for oh, me nice. because I, I know how to, gra I'm a graphic designer. So like, I know how to make all this from like the coding if I needed to, you know, I could really get in there if I wanted to. No one has time for that though. So, you know, get a, get good Canva designs, do them yourself, find a freelancer, you know, ask a friend that knows how to do it, whatever works for you. Um, but have great visuals always images work more so than I just went on speaker for me. Oh no. Use, use images more so than, uh, words every time. Cool. And um, one question uh, really quick, going back to what we had, we're talking about before that is um, Jacqueline had just asked, do you direct a link to a blog where the content is longer? So kind of like what you do with videos. So I was thinking that too. I was like, that's a good way to keep it short, but then you can direct them somewhere else. Yeah, I do. I still think that our blog, and we do have some blogs and we are building one ourselves actually. So like, it's not something that we don't do because we are in the process of doing it. But the blogs are still going to be pretty short, I'd say. Like, they're going to be still to the point. They're not going to be three pages worth of content. Um, they'll be a little bit longer, but not much longer. And I would say, if you have that much to say, break it up. You know, you can show up now in three different ways. Do a video about some of it. Do a blog about some of it. Do an email about some of it. Reach people in multiple different ways, you know, not just in your email. Um, draw them in. And you, you know, you can use the blog as a way to get their emails. You could say, here's a long form content copy PDF of what I'm saying. Don't just have your blog accessible for anyone to see that giving you their email either. Right. Um, so have that content, say, click here to read more. They can download it or give you their, your, their email to read more. And then they can go on and, and read the rest of it. But I still would keep it concise as much as possible to the point. Yeah, that's cool. Um, another question I want to make sure I ask here is because um, some people are asking is, is there an ideal time of day or which day is best uh, for sending emails? Great question. Um, Monday mornings, think about your frame of mind. Monday mornings, I am like stressed to the max. I'm so busy. 
And I really don't want to be receiving 1500 emails at once on a Monday morning. I stay away from Monday mornings. I usually do Monday afternoons, anytime Tuesday through Thursday, and sometimes Fridays, but yeah. again, most people check out on Fridays. Yeah. So I would say middle of the week is always easy. Now that's me as a business. If you feel like your readers and whoever's your client or customer, whoever you want to be reading this, was going to be only be reading emails on Saturdays, do it that way. Yeah, that's smart. Smart way to think about it. The other thing that I would mention too is um, the when you can look, once you do start sending some of them out, you can look and see which ones are performing best and kind of like play around with that too. Because I know that that's something we've noticed. Like there is a good example is, which I wouldn't recommend this because it might just be like, all of you, this is working for. But when we send, we like never would send an email on Friday. Like Monday's Friday, like you don't touch those days. But we started sending things on Fridays and they were doing really well. And we're like, whoa, okay. So we started doing, but but it's not every time, but it, it was shocking Yeah, you though. just have to play around with it, see what works better for your audience. That's why the numbers are really important, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure in there. Um, a couple things too here. So um, one random thing, this is to me, um, Denise asked if I could put those links at the beginning. So I did actually, and then I realized I sent them to hosts and panelists only. So I need to resend those. I apologize. I'm going to send some links in there that I talked about for like Academy and stuff. Um, so I'll put those in there. Um, but another question here for you though, um, this is from Clara and, um, and this is a good question because she said, I'm using um, Travel Leaders Network and my host offers marketing emails for me, but she just kind of thinks it might be too much, um, like if getting those. And so I know there's other people out there who might have the ability to get marketing emails sent on their behalf. So what is kind of your feeling on that? Yeah, I would, this is tough. Mm -hmm. Personally, they're not you they're not going to speak. I feel like a lot of those templated content and emails is still not showing up for your brand the way that you probably want it to. If you are looking to represent and align yourself with their marketing emails, great. Use their content. My instinct is you make your own emails, honestly. Um, make sure that they fit your brand the right way. Make sure they fit your content the right way. If you feel like they're too much, they're definitely too much in terms of frequency wise. So I would watch out for that. A lot of people be like more is better and it's just not. So that would be something I will look out for as well. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love that. And um, okay, another uh, possibly last question, but we'll see um, is because uh, we were talking about AI and then um, some people are like, wait, what is open AI? What is AI? And I'm like, I'm sorry, we really should have because it's literally I'm sorry, like I should have explained. Like, I'm sorry. No, me too. I was like, oh, wait, it's artificial intelligence. And that still doesn't really explain it. So could you just give like a high level on like what that is and, and chat GBT and open AI? A thousand percent. And I'm actually just going to very, very quickly share my screen here just so that I feel like this is important for everyone to just know. Um, and that's where I'm going to take a, a quick millisecond to just show you. This is um, an amazing piece of technology. It has, it like any piece of technology, it is what you make of it. It is what you put into it. Um, there are so many classes out there that you can learn more about it, but I'll briefly explain what it is. ChatGPT is basically like a Google search engine that speaks back to you with words instead of a list of things for you to go look through. So you can say, I need you to create a marketing email for me and lay out a great template of like a marketing email. The results you're going to get are not very specific, right? The same way if you put it into Google, it wouldn't be that specific. But if you say, I'm a luxury travel advisor with clients that only travel to Africa and they only want to stay in five-star, you know, hotels or, or um, parts of the safari that they're doing, et cetera, they only need to fly first class. I want to send them emails about the most interesting um, topics right now. You get my point. Uh, you, if the more specific you get, the better answers you get. So I'm going to just show you really, really quickly. It's going to be a very bad example, but I'll do it very briefly. Basically, ChatGPT allows you, and this is exactly what I used this morning or two days ago or whatever it was. Um, you are a speaker on topics related to email marketing in the travel industry. The title of the keynote webinar is called Unlocking Email Marketing Success Secrets, The Blueprint to Convert. The keynote you're presenting is the following outline. This is literally from copy and paste from the invitation for this webinar. This is the outline that me and Stephanie had agreed upon of what we are going to discuss. And this is what it typed out to me. 
it gave me this massive outline of exactly what to say. I also then said, please create an outline that is ideal for the keynote. So like the actual presentation slide by slide. And it gave me this. This is, again, I'm breezing through this. This is a great opportunity. It's literally chat.openai.com will take you to this website that I'm talking about. Um, that's a, a, just a great tool to use and you should play around with it. Again, I cannot emphasize this enough. You have to learn how to use it in order to get good results. This is something that is not just like plug in general things and expect the internet to realize what you're asking it to do. So that's the only thing I'll say there. Um, and then I said here, summarize the key topics to include on each of these slides. So it takes everything it just told me. And I said, okay, great, summarize it. And it did, and it summarized every slide. And if you look here, pretty much is every slide <laughs> title of what I talked about. And I personalized it and I made it fit to me and my business better, but I literally went back and forth on how to iterate it better. And this is a very quick review of what it looks like, but it's basically a tool that is, it's basically like speaking back to you from the internet and it pulls things from the internet itself. It's so incredible. And the other thing too is, um, cause someone asked how much it is. Um, like I use the free, free. version. There is. Yeah. Free. So you do too. Free. Yeah. Um, you only use, uh, the more expensive one. If you want to like do backend API integrations with like, which like businesses will use for like technology integrations. My guess is no one here nope. needs to use that. So free version nope, only, free version only. <laughs> I see, um, you know, a lot of people use it for like, I have these three ingredients in my fridge. Uh, what recipe can I make from it? Like, yeah. It can be anything. You know, I am going to a conference. This is the list of people and they're all of their LinkedIn's. You could send it all at once. This, this person's name and their LinkedIn summarize every person that I'm going to interact with at this conference. I went to LA Miami two weeks ago and that's what I did. And I knew every person was supposed to meet with bio, what business they did. And I had it written out, ready to go. It's so crazy. It's so incredible. And actually, um, and I have one more question. I know we have a couple minutes, but um, two it, yeah. things that, um, one, I'm actually publishing it tomorrow. There'll be a podcast about chat GBT um, with um, one of our speakers actually for new agent bootcamp next, uh, mm -hmm. next month. So that'll be coming out tomorrow. So watch for that. Um, and then I also have another one recording, but yeah, we're already like, we need a whole webinar on this. So this is such great stuff. Maybe but that'll be, yeah. I know. <laughs> we need so, like five more on this. But I yeah. know. I love how everything always just like comes back to like AI because it's so incredible if it's just, if you just learn how to use it, right. And, and yeah. just to uh, take us home on this is what would be like someone had asked like can you share like what would you input for a prompt so like when it does come to email marketing I mean you could ask it um for yeah. ideas or like how do you use it for email marketing yeah so the exact one that I got for that fourth of July email was please write a short casual and pithy fourth of July marketing email opening paragraph because I just wanted like a fun paragraph title um that's exactly what I said came out with some random like thing that I was like okay this is not what I wanted and I said, okay, change it to be about preparing to log off for the weekend, you know, and relaxing. Um, and, and, you know, you kind of iterate back and forth. So there is no set prompt. There is no way to do it. Over communicating with what you are looking for, the objectives, the purpose, the audience, the tone of voice. There's a lot of formulas that you can find on the internet of like how to get the most out of all of these tools, specifically AI, um, open AI. So Google that they'll, those, there's literally tools and like things to touch on in each prompt and it'll give you better answers. Um, yeah, Stephanie, I'm sure you guys will touch so on this a ton, but in terms of email marketing, you know, a lot of our co-pilots are incredibly tra well-trained on how to use AI. So if any of you, you want to use them too, they would be able to build a lot of your emails and like they can build like five emails at once for you in a fraction of the time, you know, which is just so amazing. So that's just another way they look out for it as well. Yeah, it's so cool. And that's the thing too. Uh, anybody who hasn't used it and you're go going to go get use it after this, have fun and prepare to go down a, a hole because you'll just start asking it really things and you'll start to learn how it re like how it reacts the way you're asking things and stuff. And you just have to keep asking to get where you're wanting. Um, so really awesome. Yeah. Um, one thing I did want to mention too, actually, is um, so one person asked, uh, going back, talking about Loom, um, 
is can you use it on Travify? And yes, you can. And actually it's super cool because that's a great way to like walk through. You can do it many ways, but one that I see is where people will walk through the itinerary or a proposal, and then they'll link the loom in that itinerary. Or if you're doing it on the website, same thing, you're just linking it um, in there. And you also can put a uh, YouTube video. So if you ever do have like a YouTube or Vimeo video, you can put them in there, but loom works too. So it's really cool. Yeah. So there's so many, and again, there's just so many technologies out there that you can use. I know it might take a second to figure out how to use them and how best to use them. Most importantly though, don't let technology take over from you reaching your customers, doing it, you know, communicating with them in a way that's authentic to you um, and just finding ways to provide value to your business. So if you do anything, the more you bring in technology, just remember to bring back the human at the end of it, um, just because that's how really this industry will have certain players stand out is by bringing out the human in you and making sure you break through all that noise. So that would be the only thing that I leave you with as well. I like that. That's perfect. So good. And um, one thing that I want to share before, uh, just one more plug here before we say goodbye is new agent bootcamp. So um, definitely join us on July 12th through the 13th. Um, super awesome. And even if you're not a new agent, like if you're newer, this is going to be fantastic for you. But even if you're not a newer agent, there's still going to be a lot of nuggets. I would check out all the sessions and read them and, and see if they might apply to you because, um, each day, I mean, there's going to be a lot of really good tips in all of them. Um, uh, but then especially the second day where we have all Travify stuff, you might learn a, a couple new tricks in there as well. So definitely join us for that. Um, but I just want to say thank you so much again, Grace. This has been incredible. Like yeah, really, really good. <laughs> and, and for doing it from else? the lounge. Yeah. Oh, anytime. And if there's anyone else that wants to talk about email marketing, how to just work on your business, grow your business, seriously, go to this new agent bootcamp and always feel free to email me, Stephanie, if you want to throw my email into the chat, I love oh, with sure. talking with people in the industry, um, just to, you know, chat with them, find ways to help them in their business too. So if you find this at all interesting, would love to talk to you as well and, and connect. So, and you know, you can always add your email to our, uh, to our website forum so that you can hear more and, and see all of our emails as well. <laughs> Highly recommend it. I get them too. And I'm definitely some of those open and clicks because I'm always like, Ooh, I just love the, it just, it's just, they're fun. I like it. So <laughs> really you. good yeah. stuff. And I threw, um, her email in there, everybody too, but, um, but yes, and thank you so much again. Truly, truly appreciate all of you taking your time and for you too as, as well, Grace. Um, and yeah. yeah, join us New Agent Bootcamp. Hopefully we see you there and and check out that podcast um, with Grace uh, too so you can hear more about Lucia yeah. and all the fun stuff going on there. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks so much. Cool. And uh, see you from the lounge next time. <laughs> Thanks, yes. Oh, safe travels. I hope you get home easily. Well, too. thank you. <laughs> see ya.